Of all the management practices that you can do for wildlife, and more specifically white-tailed deer, I know one of my favorites is creating wildlife openings for them because the, you can diversify these things and accomplish so many things. We talk about wildlife management as a canvas and doing management itself is, is the art of it. And there's no better way to express this art that we, Cody and I talk about than creating wildlife openings. Before you fire up your chainsaw, go out into the woods, you first kind of have to ask yourself a question of what is a wildlife opening or what are we trying to accomplish with a wildlife opening? And to me, what makes wildlife openings so cool is because they really allow us as managers to express our creativity. Because I think if you break a wildlife opening down and it's most simplistic terms. The foundation of it is just letting sunlight hit the forest floor and there are several different ways that you can accomplish that whether it's through dropping trees completely, having a professional logger come in and do a timber harvest for you if you're doing more of a, an herbicide application whether the hack and squirt or double girdle method and letting sunlight hit the forest floor but that is the ultimate goal at the end of the day and the result and the response from just letting sunlight get to the floor is there's so many native plant species in the seed bank that are just begging for a chance. And that chance is sunlight. They just need a little bit of help, especially in an area like this where it's almost completely closed canopy. I promise you, once we open the canopy, maybe run a fire through this leaf litter and expose the soil, there's gonna be pokeweed and ragweed and blackberry, all kinds of ruba species just a flush of native vegetation in the form of grasses and forbs that benefit all wildlife. Again, before you actually get out and start on the process, give it some intentional thought. Have a purpose as to what you're doing. Don't just go in and say, oh, here's an acre. I'm just going to cut every tree and make a mess of things and then there's a wildlife opening. That's not the case. In a situation like this, we're up near the top of a mountain and on my piece of property and down near the bottom we have a food plot and a water hole which transitioning up the mountain above that we have an old field type of environment. So to diversify the habitat further in this area, if we wanted to, which we're not going to, we could have a logger come in here, clear off a couple acres and make another old field environment. But we want more of a wildlife opening, we want a diversity of habitats transitioning through our property for white-tailed deer, but for all wildlife in general. So in this type of area, we'll do a mixture of some cutting and some herbicide applications to create a wildlife opening. And in the process, we'll have a patchwork of different habitats scattered throughout our property, which will take the pressure off of each sub-environment. Right now, the food plot is heavily browsed, overpressured. Once we manage the old field, each environment that we create complements and supplements the other. So just having that intentional thought and recognizing where we're at more than anything else, this is south facing. So as soon as we open the canopy, create some disturbance on this leaf litter, run a fire through it, or just letting sunlight hit the forest floor, because it is south facing, the response is going to be almost immediate and significant in the form of those forbs and grasses that we talked about that will create so much life, so much food, so much cover. Think of a wildlife opening as a bed and breakfast. Food and cover, a place to feel comfortable, a, face, a place to feel safe, a food source as well. So asking yourself those questions, having a plan, giving it some intentional thought and having a purpose before you go out and fire up the chainsaw and cut the first tree will get you well on your way to a successful wildlife opening. We do a lot of talking about diversity and you know, the more diverse a piece of property is, the more attractive it is for wildlife. And what's unique and what's really, <laughs> it's, it's exciting, is when you create an environment, whether it's an old field or wildlife opening, you can sit there and micromanage that environment to specific things and specific times of the year, different species. So once you get these things created, you can come in there with herbicide and do a little spot spraying. If you notice this, it's too much of that. Or if you notice that there's some nesting birds, some unique birds using the area, manage for them. The spillover will be the white-tailed deer, but for turkeys and etc., it's you can manage each one of those ecosystems differently. So that is really exciting. Again, diversifying 
everything that you do. It's just not a one thing, let's cut some trees down and walk away and think that's great for deer. No, you could be better, do better, especially for wildlife. Another thing to think about too is when, when you manage for these things, you know, we tend to, you know, let them grow up and then what you have is a bunch of, you know, saplings that might be above your head, but by as, you know, as thick as your thumb. Well, you're walking through them and they might be smacking you or it's just, yeah, you know. For some species of wildlife, that is absolutely fantastic, especially for maybe the rough grouse. But if you're trying to manage for white-tailed deer, the food source already is up in the air. Now, it's just cover. It's not cover that equals food. So going in there and bringing that uh, habitat, that cover, down to where it could be utilized for white-tailed deer. Thermal cover, where the deer could bed down and the wind will, won't affect it. When you have a open, you have a high stem density, the wind still can go through. It's not doing what it's intended to do. You can diversify these wildlife openings, whether it's for songbirds, whether it's for turkeys, whether it's for grouse, whether it's for white-tailed deer. Again, use your imagination and uh, have fun with this. At the end of the day, these wildlife openings, the limitation is your creativity because it's whatever you want to manage for is what you can make these things turn into, whether it's songbirds, turkeys, white-tailed deer. It's just in a great environment. Again, managing your native vegetation goes a long way. Adding diversity, cover to equals food, and as Cody was talking about, doing different types of cuts allows sunlight to hit the floor quicker. Uh, different times, it creates a dead tree, which is great for other wildlife species uh, amongst just the, the stuff on the ground. But yeah, it's something to look into, something to think about. And uh, as always, remember to have fun. Remember to smile. Remember not to cut your leg off. And uh, I'm sure it is for you as it is for me, wildlife management. It's our way of life.